Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansing. The general election is behind us, and now what remains is getting the final results for each race. The counting has begun, and there were a number of problems that led votes not to be counted on Tuesday night. News 2's Erica Parsons has more about how things went on St. Croix. The general election may be over, but the race to get final results is just beginning. Voting machine problems Wednesday. Delayed the scanning and counting of the three remaining polling places on St. Croix, Elena Christian, John F. Kennedy, and Alexander Henderson. Poll workers weren't able to finish scanning election night because of machine problems and workers being too exhausted to continue. Candidates, their representatives and members of the public carefully watched every step of the process as Board of Election members removed and recorded seals, verified there were no votes on each machine, and counted the number of ballots stored in the box below. And no one is taking anything for granted. This machine is identified as a Elena Christian machine. How, how would you know that those ballots are inside here? On the top. Here. Oh, okay. on the top of the machine. Jump drives are also coded for the machine. The senatorial race is hotly contested. Incumbent Diane Capehart appears to have been unseated, and Senator Alicia Hansen, whose name was removed from the ballot just days before the election, has to wait for the write-in votes to be counted to know where she stands. Newcomers Kurt Vialet and Novell Francis took the top spots in that race, and if there are any changes, incumbents Terrence Nelson or Norido O'Reilly in the six and seven spots could be in jeopardy. The number of ballots not counted from those remaining precincts number in the thousands, and we're not even talking about the absentee ballots, the early voting sticker, symbol, and unreadable ballots that still need to be counted, and officials haven't been able to provide any actual estimates of what's remaining. The one thing we do know for certain, though, is members of the public will be closely monitoring this process every step of the way. Reporting for News 2, I'm Erica Parsons. Meanwhile, on St. Thomas, voters also headed to the polls in spite of some hours of bad weather and in the face of uncertainties about the voting process. News 2's April Knight was on the scene to bring you details of how Election Day went for St. Thomas voters and what it looked like at the polls after they closed. <music> On election day, St. Thomas St. John Board Chairman Arturo Watlington was pounding away at wooden boxes in the election office, installing locks that would secure the hand count ballots expected to come later that evening. We are not unmindful of the conspiracy theories that continue to permeate and to be prevalent in this community. Watlington is perfectly aware of voters' concerns about not being able to scan their own ballots, dropping them instead into storage bins in the DS-200. But few voters have actually voiced out such concerns at the polling sites. I had uh, thought about it a lot from, from what I'd heard, the different switches and uh, this and that. Uh, I thought it would be harder and um, less private. So, so I was glad to see how smoothly it went. Police officers patrolled the precincts, ready to keep the peace if needed, in one of the most controversial elections in years. When the polls closed, the sorting started. They are feeding the machines with the ballots, which you already saw a sort. Mm -hmm. We sort them according to voting. If you have symbols, mm -hmm. we vote the symbols, or you have regulars who vote not the symbol, but any you know individual candidates. The rest with symbols, write-ins and errors got transported back into the election system. These ballots were taken to the back room before being placed inside the wooden bins. Unofficial results delivered a surprise for St. Thomas. In a stunning upset, newcomer Marvin Blyden, who barely made the last spot in the primaries, skyrocketed to number one, bypassing top primary vote-getters Clifford Graham and Myron Jackson. The unofficial results that came in at 1.52 in the morning did not include the hand counts done Wednesday afternoon. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. And here are the combined results from the St. Croix and St. Thomas St. John districts. For delegate to Congress, Stacey Plaskett topped the race with more than 90% of the votes. 
For Governor, it's a head-to-head -head between the Matt Potter ticket, which received more than 49 percent, and the Christensen Otley ticket, which got more than 35 percent of the votes. On St. Croix, the senators are as follows from the top, Kurt Vealy, Novelle Francis, Samuel Sanis, Kenneth Gittens, Neville James, Terrence Nelson, and Narita O'Reilly. On St. Thomas from the top, Marvin Blyden, Myron Jackson, Clifford Graham, Tregenza Roach, Gene Ford, Jeanette Millen Young, and Donald Cole. Almando Rocky Liburd received 61% of the senator at large votes. The count continues, however, with about five precincts worth of ballots. Meanwhile, the race for governor now tethering between Democrats Donna Christensen and Basil Otley and independent ticket Kenneth Mapp and Oscar Potter could lead to a runoff on November 18th. As it stands, Mapp and Potter dominate the unofficial results, gaining more than 49 percent of the votes, with Christensen and Otley trailing at 35 percent. Mapp needs 51 percent of the votes to be declared the victor of the race. When all the votes are counted and Mapp does not reach the 51 percent mark, a runoff could ensue that pit the two tickets against each other. As we mentioned, only 33 precincts were included in the latest results from the election system. News 2 will keep you updated on the status of the continuing count. Well, one of the referendum questions whether or not to legalize medicinal marijuana got mixed responses from voters. 56% voted yes to legalization for medicinal purposes, while 43% voted no. The referendum question is legally non-binding. For medicinal use, yes. Uh, I, from some things that I have read and things that I have heard, uh, I understand that there are people that are sick and that this marijuana can help them a great deal. Uh, for other reasons, no. And the other referendum question, however, did not fare so well. When asked if senators' terms should be increased from two years to four years, more than 84 percent of voters said no. Millie, what do you think about increasing the terms of senators from two years to four years? I think it's an excellent idea. I think that the senators need more time to think about things, to write their decisions, uh, and basically, that's it. Mm -hmm. You don't think they can do that in two years? I do not think they can do it in two years. We'll turn our attention stateside. As the dust settles from Tuesday's midterm elections, Republicans are planning how to use their momentum. After taking control of the Senate along with adding an even larger majority in the House, Democrats are adjusting to a new reality on Capitol Hill. And President Obama today is talking about how all of this will impact his final two years in office. Craig Boswell is at the White House. For the first time since President Obama took office, he will face a Congress with Republicans in control of both houses. Uh, obviously, Republicans had a good night. The GOP picked up at least seven Senate seats from Democrats and added at least 10 seats in the House of Representatives. The president phoned Senator Mitch McConnell, who is positioned to become the new Senate Majority Leader. The American people have spoken. They've given us divided government. The question for both the president and for the speaker and myself and our members is what are you going to do with it? The president has pledged to take executive action to stop the deportation of undocumented immigrants. Uh, what we can't do is just keep on waiting. It's like waving a red flag in front of a bull to say, if you guys don't do what I want, I'm going to do it on my own. The president has invited congressional leaders to the White House on Friday to begin discussing some of the challenges that lie ahead. Both sides are facing questions about whether they can end the gridlock. As president, I have a unique responsibility to try and make this town work. The Democrat who counts is the president of the United States. Republicans can still add to their numbers. Senate races in Virginia and Alaska haven't been called. There's a runoff in Louisiana and a number of House races still unsettled. That was Craig Boswell reporting. Keeping our eye on the economy, some analysts say the market will get a boost now that Republicans have won control of the Senate because a Republican-controlled Congress could pass new legislation like tax reform that would benefit big companies. Voters also weighed in on important economic issues. Five states voted to increase the minimum wage. 
Here's a look at the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow up 100, NASDAQ down 2, S&P also up at 11. Coming up on News 2, police on St. Croix are investigating two burglaries that occurred at two separate residences in Estate Betsy's Jewel. Plus, why Eulalie Rivera students were celebrating last week. Police on St. Croix continue to investigate two burglaries that occurred at two separate residences in Estate Betsy's Jewel. The first incident occurred on November 2nd, just after 2 a.m. A homeowner told police that she was awakened by the sound of her home burglar alarm. When she went to investigate, she noticed that the door that leads from her garage to her living room was open and she called the police. The officer arrived, they found metal louvers were removed from the garage window and that the motion sensor wires were also cut. Police said the burglar alarm caused the suspects to flee the area. And at about 8.30 a.m. the same day, another burglary was reported in the same area. The homeowner told police that she secured the home before going to bed. And when she got up in the morning, she noticed that the glass louvers had been removed from the living room window and someone gained access into her home. Missing was $40, which was inside of her purse, her cellular phone, and her car keys. Her 2009 green Honda CRV license plate CDY672 was also missing. District Court Judge Curtis Gomez sentenced Emmanuel Benel Cuadrado, 24 years of age, to 14 months in prison. Re records indicate on June 10, 2014, Cuadrado, a resident of Puerto Rico, pleaded guilty to count two of a two-count indictment charging him with the attempted transportation of firearms on an aircraft. Court records show that on April 13, 2014, Cuadrado traveled from Puerto Rico to St. Thomas on a JetBlue flight and checked the box containing three firearms. United States Customs and Border Protection officers and Homeland Security investigations agents intercepted the firearms prior to the flight's departure. The three firearms were removed from the box and replaced with two fake firearms. Upon the flight's arrival in St. Thomas, Cuadrado retrieved the box from the two airports baggage claim area and was arrested. The Virgin Islands National Guard will conduct a retirement ceremony for its retiring Assistant Adjutant General, Brigadier General Elton Lewis. That's on Sunday, November 9th at 11 a.m. in the Brigadier General Gerard James Sr. Joint Force Headquarters at the Estate Bethlehem Military Installation on St. Croix. During his 38 years of service, General Lewis served in various military positions, including commander of the 661st Military Police Company, commander of the 104 Tro Troop Command Battalion, director of Joint Staff, and his last position as the Assistant Adjutant General. As a civilian, Lewis served in leadership and command positions in local government agencies. He was commissioner of the VI Police Department. On May 3, 2011, he was sworn in as the director of the VI Territorial Emergency Management Agency. Well, just a reminder, from the Department of Education, all public schools will be closed on Monday, November 10th, due to a professional day scheduled for teachers. Also, schools will be closed the following day as well, Tuesday, November 11th, and that's to observe Veterans Day. On Friday, October 31st at 1 p.m., the Eulalie Rivera Elementary School Rams family had a grand AYP, Adequate Yearly Progress and Drug-Free Celebration. Local guest artists Denise and daughter Lil Miss Skittles performed. The celebration also served as a reminder that good things come to those who do well and as an encouragement for them to do even better for the 2004-2015 school year, according to the uh, principal. The Smarter Balance Test is already in place as the new standardized assessment. Eulalie Rivera's faculty, staff, and students paraded in a sea of red to show that they live a happy and healthy drug-free life. Peter Gruber International Academy celebrates the addition of three new facilities on its school campus with honoring the Life of Peter Gruber ceremony, and that's set for Monday, November 10th. VI philanthropist Peter Gruber 
was a huge supporter of the sciences and education. He passed away just last month. Since 2012, the school has had a partnership with Peter and wife Patricia Gruber. The event is free and open to the community to get a first look at the newly constructed amphitheater, performance center, solar and sports awning, the eco-friendly infrastructure facilities, and much more. That ceremony starts at 9 a.m. with a ribbon-cutting reception and campus tours. Well, the grand celebration of the Point Wellness Spa at Point Pleasant on St. Thomas on the East End was held on the 25th. It was a huge kickoff featuring Christopher Harrison, creator of the Anti-Gravity Aerial Yoga, which is a fitness technique that combines aerial arts and traditional yoga practices. He has franchised the program and introduces this technique at fitness centers around the world. Now, those in attendance were able to meet the owners and instructors as well as tour the facility. There was live music by Presha, performances there, and a live DJ and much more special give giveaways. The Wellness Boutique Spa is uh, one that offers nutritional guidance as well as active wellness services such as aerial yoga, floor yoga, and fitness classes, and standard relaxation and spa services such as meditation, massages, and skin care. We'll be sure to stick around your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.